I'll clean all these shutter components with NAFLA, cigarette lighter fluid. This shutter is quite clean as shutters go. Um, so there's not an awful lot to do here. Just removing any old grease. There's a bit of cotton has just got caught in behind that spring there. Just getting rid of that. Basically I just want all this clean, dry and free from oil. So that the shutter blades don't stick. Of course this polished plate tends to show any oil, so you tend to concentrate on that when you're cleaning. doesn't mean that there isn't oil on the other surfaces, just that it's not as obvious. So that'll do for the case and I'll do the mechanism plate in much the same way. Now there's nothing particularly difficult about any of this cleaning process. It's just taking care to make sure you get everything and just being aware of small fragile components that you don't damage anything this is fairly robust you're not likely to things like the spring here the detent spring that usually stays on the shutter while you're doing this um, it's just awkward to put on and take off again but if it came off it's not a, not a horrendous problem And the little pallet here, which controls our flash sync speed, that should move freely. Usually, it'd be very rare that you'd have any problem with that. Sometimes people have been a bit over generous with graphite grease in the past, and some of these components are pretty much gummed in place with it. That looks good. The blade actuating ring was not particularly free running on this shutter. It may have been due to the state of the grease that was on it, or lack of grease, or lack of lubricant in the right places. But the first start is always the same. Get rid of everything. And when you put it back together, lubricating it with an appropriate lubricant in the right places. We know the shutter worked quite well, so there were certainly no major issues there. It'll work better when we're finished. And the lens tube. The blade actuating ring runs around the, that lens tube at the base, so that's got to be nice and clean. Um, it's not something you're likely to have problems with, so it's not likely to be rough patches or anything like that, or corrosion. Um, if that was corroded, you've probably got bigger corrosion problems somewhere else. That's just a case of making sure it's all clean. And be aware of threads of cotton coming off. Watch to make sure, look closely to make sure that there aren't threads of cotton 
wrapped around things or tucked under things that might cause you grief. Well that part looks quite good and those components I think I can reassemble. I'll use molybdenum paste to lubricate the blade actuating ring. You use this very sparingly. So I usually just put some on a toothpick and just get a smear on there. It's like leaving a dirty mark more than anything else. The inside edge is important, just make sure I haven't got any, left any lumps on there. That all looks good. And get the blade actuating ring back in position. Of course we've got our spring sitting there in space, so I'll just have to hook that under there. And I'll take the opportunity to get rid of that thread of cotton. Our spring should be behind that post. I'll lift that. Round and behind this pin if I can get it to go it seems unusually stiff to me okay put the lens tube in place that only goes in one position one of the three legs on that has got the edge chewed off at an angle and that goes here against that pin you can't put it on any other way now we're only putting two of the screws on here because the third one holds that bracket and that bracket can't be fitted yet because the uh, we need to put the main cam on at a later stage. So we'll just fit two of these screws and I'll tighten those up. Checking the movement of my blade actuating ring and that is a vast improvement on what we had previously. And I haven't uh, even lubricated the detent spring yet, which I'm just about to do. With my molybdenum paste. Where that detent spring runs over that rivet on the blade actuating ring. That's great, that's moving very nicely now. That'll do for the present. So. That is our mechanism plate and I need to clean the shutter blades and then that can be put back together. Well the shutter blades need to be cleaned with naphtha. They look to be in a good state to me so they're not going to require any polishing. Uh, if there's any hint of corrosion I usually polish those with some Brasso metal polish but I won't need to this time. So the blades I'm just cleaning with some naphtha I'm using a toothpick in my other hand to hold the blades down so that they uh, stay where I'm working Four of the blades are identical. Then we have one blade with the rear of the blade cut away to clear one of the shafts and one cover blade which is only narrow. I've got the window light coming in from my right and I can use that judge from the reflections of that that I see on the blades 
how clean I have these surfaces and whether there are any marks on there that would cause me concern. These blades all look pretty good to me. Okay, so far so good. With the mechanism plate, the read, uh, blade actuating ring moved anti-clockwise against the post that's the blades open position I can start putting my blades back in place blades numbers one three four and five are identical number one goes here number two has a cutout in the back of it that goes here to allow for a shaft to come through there three goes here four goes here I'll pick that up in a second four goes here over that post This is where I can pick it up. Five goes here, and six, the cover blade, goes on top of the first blade. If I can pick it up. Here. Now normally being very careful I move the blade actuating ring slightly to bring the... Alright, I wasn't intending to drop that. I'll just restack that lot. Let's see where we are. It's a six. So, one, two, three, four. Six. Now I'll bring that arm in slightly to bring the blades in from the edge. Hold that from underneath. Be careful not to get my fat fingers on the blades. And get the case over the top. Now this hole in the case, that square hole goes over that round peg. Don't ask me why they have a round peg in a square hole. That's just the way they did it. Holding that together on the block, holding it down, I can check to see that the blades move, and they do. And I have three screws that hold the case together. So I can get them in position. I'm using my new super fine tweezers and they take a bit of getting used to very fine at the tip which allows 
you to manipulate tiny things quite well like threads of cotton but uh, they're also great for stabbing you in the finger alright so there's our blades all in place and we move on to the next step for convenience I'll put this back in my shutter holder and that just makes it much easier for me to work on that otherwise it's wobbling all over if I'm putting it down on a wooden block mostly because the flash contact sticks out the back and stops it sitting down on a flat surface very easily of course you could get around that by drilling a hole on your wooden block where the flash contact would comfortably sit but I'm not going to first task is to get some of these springs back in position this one is the first one I want to get in place I've just got to flip it over so that it's the right way up get it over the post here I've got a toothpick and I'm going to hold on that post so that spring can't escape now I've got to pick up the end of the spring with my tweezers excuse me back where I was before the phone rang Holding my toothpick over the centre I can pick up the end of the spring with my tweezers lift it over the post on this arm and now this lever and this lever are spring loaded I must say that having a decent set of pointy tweezers made that much easier than it usually is because my other pointy tweezers have got somewhat gummy looking over time and this spring which I just dropped let's flip that over this is the spring for the B lever if I can get this in position it fits around a groove in that post there we go that's sitting there And the B lever can be put back in place. The B lever's job, of course, is to hold the shutter open while you have your finger on the shutter release when the shutter's set to B. I'll just open those shutter blades up. I've got my B lever here if I can there's a notch in the back of the B lever that picks up that spring so with luck I can get the B lever to pick up that spring and sit over the post no the spring did got trapped underneath that's no good that time I was successful and the screw and spring that holds that in place it's a post so I need a special screwdriver to get that post screwed down into place And this is always awkward. It's awkward if it's just a screw. It's even more awkward when you're trying to get this post screwed in. And yeah, that's started. I haven't tightened that, but I've pulled it down into position. The spring has to be lifted up over to this side.
make sure it's seated around the groove on that post. That went well enough and I'll tighten that screw up, that post up rather. Okay, now the B lever it should be sprung loaded. If I hold it back with my finger I can pull the blade actuating ring back to close the shutter. So that's all good. Right, move on to the next stage. I'll put the pallet wheel back in place now. These parts I've all cleaned with naphtha in much the same way I cleaned the shutter blades. The little sector gear here that drives the pallet wheel. I'm just going to put a touch of molybdenum paste on the catch on the end of that. So that, that operates smoothly. And that fits in the shutter over that post. And it's return spring, I'm just going to unhook it from there, swing it round a bit. Its return spring is here. I'll get that in a pair of needle nose pliers. Hook it over the post. Stretch it out and hook it into that arm. At least that's the idea. Spring's got different ideas today. Let's try again. That's that. So that just latches when the shutter cocks that pulls over latches behind there this piece is all sprung loaded as the shutter starts to open it releases this the little sector gear drives the um, pallet wheel the pallet wheel rattles against the pallets and that affects the timing of the shutter the the flash sink delay effectively when it's set to the uh, M setting the flash is fired before the shutter starts to open and that's to allow the flash bulbs to reach peak brilliance before the shutter opens to its uh, gets gets to full aperture or, or, or as large as the aperture you as you've set okay so so far so good we need our settings lever in place here for the flash sink There's little ratchet teeth here, I usually put a wipe of molybdenum paste on those. And the detent spring which is tucked into the case underneath here, I'll just run a little wipe on the top of that detent. And getting this thing hooked into place. That drops into there, this has to go over that pin. The pin on here needs to go behind that spring. So the pin is right at this end of the travel behind the spring. And this piece is held in place with this bracket. You to press in this lever so that it's not sitting on top of that arm, because that arm's got some notches on it. And this is held in place with three screws. As you can probably no doubt here, it is a very blustery day here today.
And that's that little bit. Right, I'll put this back in my assembly jig because it makes life much easier and start putting some of the other components back in place. I'll start with this component. It goes over that post. The spring goes against the inside of the case. So it's a bit awkward to put in place. I'm sorry you didn't see what I did, but I can't see either. My finger's in the way. I have to develop a transparent finger. Moving flash contact sits on top of that. If I cock this, I can take this component which needs to be arranged to get these pretty much like that. Put that in position. Plain screw at this end. At the other end, there's a spring and a shoulder screw. Run that screw in. It's important that the spring can move freely around the shoulder on the screw that it doesn't get trapped underneath it. That looks good. And the spring needs to be lifted over and latched into a notch in the back of this arm. So I'll just get my pointy tweezers and do that. That's good. So that means that this arm is now sprung loaded. This arm's job is to latch the main drive cam when the shutter is cocked. The shutter release lever can go in next. Oh, I'll just give that a touch of molybdenum paste since I had it in my hand on the shaft. That drops and it's got to pick up the underside of the B lever and the spring here, the return spring has to come right around and be tucked under the flash sink mechanism here. It's quite a strong spring. That's it. So that's all working as it should. The main drive cam the big the curved edge runs against the arm on the retard gear train. I'm running some molybdenum and paste on that. And on the two points here and here where it picks up the blade actuating ring and a wipe through the center certainly doesn't hurt so I can fit that in position to pull that lever back to allow it to drop in That's in the cocked position at the moment. I'm 
that moves nicely. The bracket that holds our spring and is the third position, third uh, point that the lens tube is held in. That goes there. The screw that holds that bracket is slightly longer than the ones that go through the other two positions. That's because it has to account for the thickness of that bracket as well. And the spring. Well there we have a, uh, a somewhat less tired spring. That should be much better. The difference there will be is mostly when the shutter is in the parked position. In other words, at the end of the shutter release stroke, when the shutter blades come back to the closed position, because that spring lacked sufficient tension at that point, it would have meant that there was always a danger that the shutter would fail to close completely particularly if it had, the action had been retarded by um, having set the shutter speed to something very slow like one second and there was perhaps a little bit of resistance in the uh, retard gear train then all of those things would add up to a shutter which might not quite close or certainly not close as promptly as it should at the end of the stroke. Let's see how this runs. That certainly runs down nicely. No problem there. The shutter now really requires the retard gear train and self-timer. 